Well, we're joined by the head of Liberty Guard that's fighting against the police state nationwide. Uh, and what the TSA is up to, he's also a former congressman, and he's the man that introduced the impeachment articles against William Jefferson Clinton. And, of course, he's former Congressman Bob Barr. Uh, he was way ahead in polls, and I thought he was going to get in in that district in Georgia uh, there uh, outside Atlanta, but he lost to the Tea Party candidate. And it's kind of a paradox because I'm a big Tea Party guy. Uh, but I knew that Bob Barr, on almost every issue, was an outsider. He was exposing the NSA, the police state, uh, fighting against gun control, and, and, you know, trying to impeach Bill Clinton whenever the establishment didn't want that. So, uh, whereas I think the candidate that beat him is a you know, fine person, it shows how powerful the huge backlash was against any incumbent, even though Barr wasn't an incumbent and had been uh, you know, out of Congress for a while. Uh, I wanted Barr to be in there because he would start the impeachment. He said, boom, first day. Now Obama says he's going after the guns using UN treaty, not uh, law. He says he's shutting off more power plants. He's doing naked amnesty. Uh, he is uh, putting our troops under more NATO UN control across the board, acting unilaterally. And he's got two years left. So I want to talk to Bob Barr first about, briefly, about his election to see if he concurs with what I just said. And then I want to get into uh, the UN saying not just the people of America need to be disarmed, but the police as well. See, only the UN under their memorandum 7277 and UNESCO that they believe is law, even if we don't ratify it, only the UN has the weapons. How creepy. Uh, is that, and that's the headline at InfoWars.com, UN attacks U.S. gun rights and more, citing Ferguson and the police. In my mind, and we'll talk about this as well, there's no doubt that they're trying to cause racial division, riots in America, because that's all Obama's got. And we'll have Bob Barr put on his former CIA hat and his former federal prosecutor hat to ask where he thinks all this is going. But the NFL, the Black Caucus in Congress, holding up their hands, don't shoot, implying that white people inherently want to kill black people and that police inherently are involved in police shootings uh, and are guilty for what another cop does. I mean, this is race class warfare right out of the Joe Stalin book, in my view. Now, that's a mouthful. Um, again, Congressman, uh, former Congressman Bob Barr uh, joins us. Uh, let's go through all those points, sir. But first off, uh, the election, the, 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 the Tea Party victories. Uh, what do you think that uh, says to the establishment? Well, first of all, Alex, great to be uh, great to be with you and your your listeners once again. Uh, it's always uh, great to um, you know get into these topics with you because not only do you understand them, but your listeners do as well. They understand the importance of the fundamental principles that uh, that we're talking about here. It was uh, it was a, it was a strange election, uh, not only in in my race uh, for the eleventh district here in Georgia, but in a couple of other races in Georgia, and I noticed uh, elsewhere as well. Any Anybody who had any experience or prior service uh, in Washington, uh, such as I did, having served, as you mentioned, uh, as the first to call for uh, William Jefferson Clinton to be impeached back in the mid and late uh, 1990s, um, anybody who had any experience up there was labeled, as my opponent labeled me, uh, as the establishment. Now, anybody who knows me knows that, uh, you know, I'm anything but the establishment, but uh, that was uh, that was a, a, a truly a deciding factor. Um, so, you know, it, uh, Jack Kingston, for example, even though Jack Kingston, former uh, uh, you know member of the Appropriations Committee, and and he he was and is still a sitting member of Congress, he gave up his House seat to run for the Senate. Uh, and I think uh, you know, he suffered the same thing, even though he truly was an incumbent. But you know, there still are uh, a lot of issues out there. Uh, I remain just as committed uh, to fighting uh, for the Constitution uh, and uh, you know the causes uh, that, and the principles that it represents as you do. Whether I'm in office or not, I certainly would have uh, would have uh, enjoyed serving the people uh, of, of America once again in the House to use the you know, the background the experience that I have to fight against uh, increases in government power and uh, limitations
limitations on individual liberty. I uh, didn't get that chance this time, but uh, I'm continuing to fight the good fight uh, from the private sector. Well, sure. I mean, it'd be like not voting for Ron Paul if he ran again because he'd already been in there. I mean, I see it as overall a positive sign that people are really fed up, but it still shows that they're not overall educated, though, on how to, in some cases, uh, go with somebody that has experience and, you know, will actually go after uh, people. I mean, as a prosecutor, I would guess that's why you had the, the the cojones to do that. I mean, it's obviously dangerous to try to impeach a sitting president, especially Slick Willie. And these new Tea Party people that have gotten in, they better deliver or they're going to be in deep trouble with their constituents. I, I, you're, you're absolutely correct. And, you know, I love the Tea Party uh, movement. I think it's very healthy. Uh, we have some very strong Tea Party groups here in Georgia. I mean, Jenny Beth Martin, uh, the head of Tea Party Patriots, uh, is here in Georgia and uh, got her start in politics working in uh, one of my campaigns back in 2002. Uh, but, uh, yeah, there are, there are some uh, folks that are involved with the Tea Party that... Uh, you know, just don't quite understand that we need to use those Tea Party values uh, in conjunction with people who know how to move them forward. Uh, you know, at the same time as we need people up in Washington who who, who have the courage to say no uh, to government spending, government power, at the same time we do need some people up there who understand how to move our constitutional agenda forward. And that's what we uh, were missing in a lot of these cases. Well, uh, the real battle begins. What do you expect Obama to now do that he's a lame duck? I mean, we're seeing it. it, it unprecedented power grabs. Uh, even Krauthammer saying it's time to impeach him. Uh, Turley, who's a liberal, says that he's tripled the abuses of Bush. I mean, if he opens the borders to all the illegals, which he's already done, but does an executive order, if he keeps, uh, you know, shutting off power plants uh, and all these other executive actions and going after our guns. I mean, this is outrageous. It, it truly is. Uh, as bad as Bill Clinton was, and he was uh, he was a bad president, there is no way of, uh, of sugarcoating that, certainly. But as bad as he was, he did not have the deep-seated ideological arrogance that is at the core of Barack Obama. Bill Clinton uh, was very much a, a narcissist. I mean, as long as you know, he was happy and got the things that he wanted and was able to use the, the perks of power, whether it was first as the governor of Arkansas to his own benefit and then as president of the United States uh, to his own benefit, you know, he, he was uh, he was happy. Uh, he was a happy camper, you know, as long as he could have the women and and uh, and so forth, and you know, travel and 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 whatnot. Uh, Barack Obama is a is is a very very different animal. This this man is uh, has more hubris and arrogance than anybody else that I've ever come across in in public life. Uh, he truly believes that he is uh, the chosen one. That uh, because he was elected and then re-elected as president, that uh, that puts him in a plane above everybody else in the country, including even members of his own party. Uh, you talk with uh, members, uh, Democratic members of the House and the Senate uh, in private, and a lot of them will say, this guy, this president won't even come up to the Hill or get on the phone with us to work with us. Uh, he simply tells us what to do because he's the president. Now, uh, as a, uh, a lame duck, so to speak, uh, you know, who beginning in, uh, in January will no longer have either House of the Congress uh, under his thumb, uh, he will uh, simply shift gears, not worry about going to Harry Reid for, for anything, uh, and simply use uh, the power that he believes he has and can wield as president quite regardless of whether or not there is any constitutional or, or historic basis for what he's doing. It is a, we are entering, Alex, a very dangerous period in American history with this man. And that's why I wish that Ron Paul was still in Congress. I wish you were there as well, because I don't even see any of these new people, a lot of them that are great folks, challenging Boehner, challenging uh, McConnell. I mean, they need to be putting heat on them 
to go after Obama and to rein him in and block him. I know they followed a lawsuit, but uh, I mean, you're the former congressman and a former federal prosecutor. What is the proper move in Congress right now? And what would you be doing to try to pressure Boehner and others to take that action? Reminding them that uh, they have, uh, they in the House and in the Senate, have a constitutional responsibility not a political responsibility, but a constitutional responsibility to ensure that within the legislative branch, and that includes appropriations uh, of all funds that are used by the executive branch, they have an absolute responsibility to ensure uh, that the law uh, is being followed, that the intent of the legislation passed by the Congresses and signed by presidents is carried out, not just the letter, but the intent of the law, and to remind uh, the Speaker uh, and the others in leadership positions uh, in the House and the Senate that there are indeed not only steps that can be taken but must be taken to stop the expenditure of any taxpayer dollars for actions that are unconstitutional by this president. Uh, this notion... I saw somewhere that uh, one of the uh, top Republican leaders in the House was saying, well, we, we can't stop appropriated funds from being used to, for Obama to carry out his illegal immigration uh, orders uh, because there are, they use funds from fees. I mean, that's just absolute nonsense. Uh, every one of the departments offices, uh, individual positions in the executive branch is funded through appropriations passed by law by the Congress. Uh, and no funds can be used under our Constitution, but as have been uh, authorized and appropriated by the Congress. The Congress absolutely can deny any funds from being used for any particular purpose, such as carrying out an executive order that is unconstitutional. And this notion that, well, we, we can't do it, is uh, sure. it makes absolutely no sense whatsoever, Alex. Well, they also lie, because I've studied, I know you have as well, uh, under Bush Sr. and under Reagan, when they did executive actions, it was to line up working with Congress and with laws passed in Congress for the previous amnesties that were targeted and much smaller, but also criticized. This is the president operating against the Congress, just like he's doing on, on carbon taxes and, and CO2, just like he's doing on military action, just like he's doing uh, on gun control. I mean, on so many issues, he's just doing whatever he wants. And, and Congress just sort of sits back and says, thank you, sir, may we have another, sir. Uh, and every time they do that, in other words, every time the Congress does nothing in the face of a president essentially thumbing his nose at the Congress, saying, I am not going to follow a law passed by Congress, or I am going to follow uh, a course of action uh, that Congress specifically did not authorize, simply because I can, and dares the Congress to do anything. Every time the Congress just sits back and does nothing, it moves that unconstitutional ball down the field by setting a further precedent. You know, this is why, you know, one of the things that we're doing at, uh, at Liberty Guard, and I appreciate your mentioning our, our LibertyGuard.org uh, uh, site, is uh, we have a, a site called LameDuckDynasty.org uh, <laughs> to highlight uh, the importance right now during this lame duck session uh, of the citizenry getting involved and putting pressure on the House and Senate Republican leaders to stop this. So we're encouraging people not just to go to LibertyGuard.org, but to uh, you know, LameDuckDynasty.org and helping us out spread the word. This is a very dangerous time. Well, for those that don't know, you go to LibertyGuard.org. You've got a lot of resources, uh, legal tips, facts. Again, we're not attacking the average TSA person, but naked body scanners, groping children, taking our shoes off while our own government funds ISIS and these other radical groups. I mean, it's all about training us that we don't have rights. It's a social engineering program. 
plain and simple. And I just really appreciate the fact that you've been uh, leading the charge. Now they're trying to get you to pre-check in. And, I, and I'm telling you, I like the idea of convenience, going, doing an interview with the TSA, uh, doing a screening process, and then I don't have to go through uh, all that added security. The problem is, is that then they'll just bring it back on everybody later once everyone gets permission to travel. This is the idea they're introducing internal checkpoints while our borders are wide open. I mean, how can our borders be wide open and the Border Patrol be completing the smuggling process uh, as one Border Patrol agent said, shipping them in with vouchers, but then I have to go through internal checkpoints uh, and be, you know, asked questions uh, with these screening programs where they do behavioral analysis on me. Yeah, BDOs, behavior detection officers. Uh, well, it's it it always, it reminds me, uh, particularly the way you've accurately described it there, Alex, of the old. Uh, Superman bizarro world, uh, you know, where Superman somehow would go into this dimension, this bizarro dimension where everything is the opposite of the way it is in the real world. You're absolutely correct. Uh, here we are uh, with uh, not only our borders essentially wide open, but, you know, Obama and the Department of Homeland Security people just standing on our side of the border, you know, waving people in, please come in, andale, andale. Uh, and then at the same time, we're subjecting American citizens who have uh, often forgotten a constant, a legally recognized right to travel, uh, being denied that fundamental right to travel uh, simply because uh, government agents have decided that they're going to stop you from doing so unless you do everything that they tell you to do. Uh, and every time they come up, you've mentioned, uh, Alex, this, uh, this pre TSA pre-check program, they can never even make up their minds on that. They start that pre-check program, seems to be working fairly well, uh, and now uh, somebody was telling me the other day that, well, now they're making it random. So you sign up for it, and you go through, and sometimes uh, it allows you to use it, sometimes it doesn't. I mean, the nonsense, absolute utter nonsense that you have to go through in order to exercise what the U.S. Supreme Court recognized half a century ago uh, as a fundamental right, and that is the right to travel, is absolutely meaningless nowadays in the name of so-called security. Exactly. You can't have the federal government stick a checkpoint in front of something and say, this is the rules. Uh, I, mean, I mean, you're a lawyer, you're an expert on these things, but explain it to me. Uh, but I've tell you, the common law is pretty simple. If the airline itself wanted to say, once you get to our gate, we're going to search you, you would decide whether or not you wanted to go through that. Maybe one airline didn't do it, one airline did, but that's free market. But you don't have the government itself say it's a privilege to travel. That's right. Uh, it's, it's no longer a right, as almost everything that the government deals with nowadays. Uh, it's not a right. It's a privilege. Uh, yeah, I was talking with a, a local reporter here in uh, in Marietta, uh, Georgia, the other day about a local police department that uh, is 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 spending a bunch of money to get a new uh, license plate uh, reader uh, system, uh, and you know they were saying, well, gee, you know, now uh, you know we can during the holiday shopping season we can send a patrol car through a, a mall uh, parking lot and within a matter of minutes identify any uh, any cars that, uh, that might have warrants outstanding or are stolen. Uh, now, wait a minute. Uh, now, uh, if I want to go to uh, a church uh, or I want to go to a business or I want to go to a political event or I just want to go out shopping, uh, I'm subject now to having my license plate read, recorded, and a record made of that. And where so that you went, database. and that's, that's what it's really all about. Let's talk yeah. about, yeah. I mean, it's, it's just outrageous, and, and most of this is being driven by the tail wagging the dog, and that is federal monies. Federal monies are being made available uh, to local police departments with this whiz-bang technology, so they snap it up, and we'll worry about the details later. Trust us, they say. Well, I don't. I don't trust government. Well, we know that they've been secretly, since Bill Clinton's days, putting up in test federal license plate reading cameras on major highways. Now they're proliferating all over the place. 
And uh, imagine if Nazi Germany or the, or the Soviets would have had this type of technology, what they would have done. These things always get abused. And as you said, they've caught San Francisco using them a few years ago to track where everybody goes and creating records. Now they want to use them to tax you by the mile. Uh, they use them in a lot of the toll roads now. It's proliferating and it destroys any level of uh, privacy. We've only got about 10 minutes left with former Congressman Bob Barr. Then we'll open the phones up and take calls and get into some other news. But we've got about a minute and a half before we uh, go to break, sir. Shifting gears into Ferguson. I mean, in my view, this is total race baiting by the Democrats to change the subject. Uh, we've got attacks on whites, hammer murders going on, Farrakhan saying, you know, basically kill people. Uh, the Democrats, uh, President Obama came out yesterday and said, these youth have done nothing but done the right thing. And I mean, this is legitimizing a lot of criminal activity and equating it with free speech. What do you think the end game uh, is here? Now, the end game is the same as it is, whether we're talking about TSA or uh, the FEC or uh, the FCC. It's all about the big C, control. Um, one of the other aspects of what uh, what we see happening uh, in uh, in Ferguson, and I know, you, I know you've looked at this and noticed this also, Alex, in, in addition to the, uh, the rampant uh, criminal activity and the race baiting and so forth uh, that's been going on there. Uh, there was a very interesting sort of little little noticed aspect of this. There was a uh, there was a group of uh, folks called Oath Keepers. Oh, let's talk about them when private, we come back. Uh, private citizens. I'd love to chat about that and where that's taken us. That's right. In fact, uh, the police tried to basically shut that down. How dare private citizens try to stop the crime? We'll be back. Stay with us at infowars.com and open the phones up. I'll give out the number coming up in about ten minutes. You were getting into Oath Keepers when the break cut you off. Uh, tell folks about that. Uh, thank you once again, uh, Alex. Yeah, uh you know, a lot of folks may not have noticed it, but uh, shortly after the start of the recent, most recent round of uh, riots and lawlessness in Ferguson, uh, there were a number of uh, uh, individuals who appeared uh, to help businesses and on rooftops uh, to help maintain order. Uh, these were... Uh, Private citizens, law-abiding private citizens, many of them military veterans, former law enforcement uh, and first responders, who simply have taken an oath to protect and uphold the Constitution. And they went to Ferguson, put themselves uh, at risk, going there on their own to simply help uh, local business and property owners protect their businesses. Uh, and rather than the police authorities in Missouri and Ferguson say, we really appreciate this. Thank you for helping us out. We obviously need the help. What did they get for their efforts? The Oath Keepers were told to get out of town or they'd be arrested because they didn't have licenses to do what they were doing. That is simply helping individual citizens and business owners protect their property. This is the state of affairs uh, in, in America and the Western world today. Citizens who wish to help maintain order and protect uh, their rights and to carry out their God-given responsibility to protect themselves and their fellow citizens, mm -hmm. that's not ultimately the job of the police, it's the job and the responsibility of individual citizens, are now being told by police, not only do we not want your help, but you're going to be arrested if you continue to help, because it's against uh, public safety. We, the police, are responsible for public safety, and anybody who interferes with that by trying to protect themselves and others will be arrested. Well, that's what's happening here. And again, uh, I've looked at the state laws in Missouri on this. We've had uh, Stuart Rose, as a constitutional lawyer, on and the head of Oath Keepers on the nightly news to discuss what happened. Uh, the the business owners asked them and said, yes, please do come. We've had some of the business owners on, the gun shops and others. They wanted the Oath Keepers to be on top of their property. And I think the police are wrong uh, that if, if in free association, someone says, yes, please be here and help protect me, and it's a private citizen doing it, it's not commerce, and so it's not subject to licensure. And, and I believe that's a fraudulent, unlawful order given by the police. It, it it clearly is, uh, and 
but it's typical of, of government, Alex. We see it in so many ways. Government wants to have its cake and eat it, too. On the one hand, the police don't want to be liable for citizens being harmed, so they take the position, which is actually a legitimate one, that, you know, that people don't have a right to be protected by the police, but then on the other hand, they want to control people so they don't want to leave the citizenry uh, with the tools in their hands to actually protect themselves. So they say, well, yes, we don't have a responsibility to protect you because if we did, then if we didn't, we could be liable for it. But we're going to be the ones that decide when and how to protect you, not you. Uh, and that, uh, that sets the whole notion of individual responsibility and individual God-given rights on its head and places absolute control, which is what government wants, in the hands of government officials. You're right. And to, to, to have the police freak out and, and come up and say, hey, come down, basically with your hands up, you can't be on that rooftop, even after they talked to the business owners and said, no, no, we want them there. It's that image of citizens with guns that makes the state so upset because they want the monopoly of control. I mean, I'm sure the average cops appreciate Oath Keepers. But at the same time, the bureaucrats, they want that monopoly. Just like in the L.A. riots when the police stood down because they didn't want to be called you know, uh, uh, you know, police brutality or abusers or racist. Then it was the Korean shopkeepers protecting the whole neighborhood with their shotguns. And the media back during the 92 riots asked, you know, should they be arrested? Should they be allowed to not have their businesses burned down? I mean, the ultimate crime in this society now, it's like public schools teach kids don't fight back if a bully attacks you get in a fetal position and they teach people now that have home invasions don't have a gun play dead or urinate on them i mean, I mean i'm not trying to be gross here that's what they teach i i i hadn't, I hadn't heard that one before i promise i'm not kidding <laughs> I mean, I know it's not funny, but it, but it, is, it, it is, is so ludicrous. And again, it gets us back to that 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 image that I keep coming back to uh, with how strange things have begun to the old bizarro world. Uh, hopefully, hopefully, Alex, through you know your work and and the work of of other folks who really understand and are willing to put their their reputations and jobs on the line in support of the Constitution. We can start to turn this uh, around in the next couple of years, uh, but darn, if we do, we we've got to have new and stronger leadership in the House and the Senate, and we've got to really pay attention and get involved with the uh, with the primary, the uh, presidential primary coming up. Because uh, if we if we lose again, uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure where we're going to wind up. I mean, I know I'm going to continue fighting, and I know you will, but uh, you know, we, we don't have a lot of time left to start turning this thing around. It's a best of times, worst of times scenario from my view. There's never been more hardcore people of all race, colors, and creeds awake to the basic tenets of liberty and, and, and the problems of tyranny. But of the groups not awake across the board... There is just a servile, decadent mindlessness in society uh, with folks that are just do nothing but play on their iPads all day or watch television. And I can't imagine where this nation will be in the future if those types of people continue to dominate society. It's uh, not, a, not a pretty picture that it, uh, that it conjures up. Uh, what we need, we, we've got to have people who who understand the situation, uh, who have the courage and the backbone uh, to uh, to protect what we have and to start turning it around because uh, it uh, it's not going to happen. Liberty is not a self-fulfilling prophecy. We have to work at it constantly. I agree. Our, founding, our founders understood that liberty is not guaranteed. We have to fight for it every single day. LibertyGuard.org. Bob Barr is going to go in just a minute. Let me ask you one final question. In your gut, not a prediction, but just a dead reckoning, do you think anyone will stand up against Obama in Congress? 
Will they let him do the blanket amnesty? Will they let him try to use executive power against the guns and claim the UN gives him authority? I mean, is there anything Obama can do? We were talking during the break earlier about the race baiting. You said it's so incredibly obvious they don't even care. I mean, when I watch MSNBC, it is bizarro world. It is so transparent. They are clearly villains, exacerbating a problem, uh, and now they're defending, rioting in Time Magazine. I mean, they're now beating people's brains out for no reason with hammers. Racial attacks are, are uh, women being attacked at Papa John's, and the media is defending it. What is wrong with the establishment? What, what, what is wrong with the establishment is we have had now two and three generations of the constitutional dumbing down of this country uh, and this notion that everybody is a victim, particularly if you're a person of color, uh, everybody's a victim uh, and government will solve all of the problems for you. Uh, it's come home to roost. It's come a cropper. Uh, it didn't happen overnight. Uh, you know, just as you know, one would yearn for the days if we had an attorney general who was actually uh, going to Ferguson to assist law enforcement, uh, to denounce lawbreakers, to denounce rioters, uh, and yet we have is we have an attorney general going around to churches talking about what we need to do within government to address these problems uh, of racial profiling. Racial profiling has nothing to do with what's going on in Ferguson, uh, other than from the standpoint of the racial race baiting by Al Sharpton and Jesse Jackson and, and so forth. And yet uh, we have uh, the entire institution of the federal government on the opposite side. This administration is not going to change. The leadership in the Congress does not appear ready, willing, and able to change. But ultimately, I, I still am optimistic. I think there are enough good people, some of them new people in the House and the Senate on the Republican side, uh, that they will uh, make sure that some things are done. I'm not overly optimistic, but I do believe that uh, that, uh, that that we are going to see enough people stand up uh, so that we will uh, start to turn this thing around. And there are cases where the police clearly do beat and shoot black people, uh, you know, to death for no reason, and 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 those are real cases. And a lot of times the police get indicted. Uh, but there's also cases where they kill white people the same way. It's just this case is one of the worst ones to pick uh, when all the evidence points towards Brown being a thug. I'm sad he's dead. We're going to talk about the case of Eric uh, uh, Garter here in a minute, uh, choked to death uh, up in New York and Staten Island, and it does look like manslaughter to me. Uh, but still. Uh, different black leaders saying, you know, go out and kill some white people. I, I, it's just wild that there are folks that really want to have a race war in this country, and it just shows how hatred can be in, 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 in every different, quote, group. Bob Barr, thank you for the time. Thank you very much, Alex. Uh, LibertyGuard.org, and I look forward to being with you again in the near future. Yes, sir. Thanks for coming on with us. Well, there goes Bob Barr. Uh